the nerds. Our jobs in the future are gonna be a lot different. The CEO of the third most valuable company made this bold claim. Um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. So is it even worth your time learning how to program? Well, in this, I'm gonna be exploring a few new technologies that just came out in order to answer that question. Last week, the world was introduced to Devon, a fully autonomous bot equipped with tools like a coding environment and browser. With this, it can basically take over the world, providing it with only a simple prompt it gets to work putting together a plan of action, breaking up what it needs to do into simple tasks. It starts by browsing the internet to make you feel more confident that its answers aren't gonna be hallucinations, then jumps into some light coding to make you even feel less secure about your long-term job security. And then after it fixes a quick bug, it provides this groundbreaking analysis that you can provide to your boss as your own work. So let's break Devin down. It's advertised as the first AI software engineer. There's a lot of problems with that, we'll get to that but let's actually look at some of the use cases they've used it for. Now, all these demonstrations were done by employees of Cognition. So to be fair, there haven't been a lot of outside tests of this tool. Anyway, in this case, the engineer wants to fix a bug in the code. He provides some pretty detailed instructions and Devin gets to work. Now, one of the impressive things from this demo was it uses an iterative approach. So Devin here actually wrote, uh, actually added a print statement to debug the outputs uh, and the uh, inputs to the failing test, reran the test, and actually found which case was wrong. Which is actually a second bug that Devin found, and it then went and updated the code to fix this second bug. And with that demo, you may be like, Luke, I'm a data nerd, not a software engineer. This thing's just troubleshooting code bases and not actually performing data analytics. So I have nothing to worry about with my job. Well, if you recall from that first example that I showed, Devin did do data analysis. Additionally, they had a demo showcasing, well, as they stated, Today, I'm gonna show you an AI training an AI. Which is not only meta, but also shows that this is not just geared towards software engineers, but also has the potential to affect us in data science. Now this followed a similar approach as we've seen before of downloading the code, and in this case, going through and fine tuning a model, which after about an hour, it's only about 4% done with training. And conveniently, there's no conclusion on what happened with the training. Now, one of the most impressive exercises that Demon demonstrated was the ability to actually make money. It was provided with a problem from Upwork, which side note, how are you gonna calculate hourly rates whenever AIs work almost instantaneous? Anyway, this thing was looking at making inferences with a computer vision model. That's fancy talk in this case, as all it really wanted to do was label potholes on a road. Devin got to work and the first thing it noted was some of the packages were out of date, so it updated it. Which then it found a bug in the code, which wasn't supposed to be there. And once again, it used that print statement approach in order to find it. I'll be honest, I don't know why it's not using a debugger. So finally after this, it gets into running the model and providing a detailed report on it, and even provides some screenshot examples of it working in action. Along with this final write-up in a text file that overviews the work and also the conclusions that it came to. Not gonna lie, if I received this on Upwork, I'd be pretty impressed. So there's a core theme that Devin is following that I found in all these examples. Some human is unhappy because it doesn't know how to solve a problem. So it offloads that to Devin who gets to work. Devin then in all these cases went and pulled this GitHub repository after it found a solution working in an iterative approach and reported back to the human, I love you Devin, which should no longer be unhappy. And this demonstrates an important point. You still need a human in the mix in order to guide Devin onto what problems it needs to be solving. Oh wait, what's this? GitHub introduces a new tool in order to automatically fix code? This new feature promises that this new system can remediate more than two thirds of the vulnerabilities that it finds, often without the developers having to edit any code themselves. Okay, scratch that on human intervention. All right, before we go further, we need to pay some bills and give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Coursera, which is having a special deal right now. Now, the number one course that I recommend for aspiring data analysts is the Google Data Analytics Certificate. This covers not only what it's like to be a data analyst, but also goes into all the core technologies you need to know, including SQL, programming languages, viz tools, and spreadsheets. It's where I recommend anyone new to data analytics start. And I've made a number of videos interviewing those that have taken this to better understand the value of this certificate. Now, right now, Coursera is offering a heck of a deal. 
where you can receive $100 off your yearly subscription to Coursera Plus, which works out to being less than a dollar a day. With this, it not only gives you access to the Google certificate, but also 7,000 other learning programs, including a ton of resources on my favorite programming language. Now, I'm not just recommending Coursera because of the sponsor of this video. I've actually personally paid for Coursera Plus and used it for my learnings as shown by this receipt. More recently, I've been using this to improve my knowledge on applying AI and data analytics. Specifically, I've been working through a lot of different courses and I just completed this project-based course on using Python's LangChain for analyzing your own data, which we're gonna go into more detail in a bit of what technologies I'm gonna be covering over the next year. All right, thanks again to Coursera for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. So how does Devin actually perform in a comparative test to other common models. And these results were testing whether it can resolve real world GitHub issues. Devin got a whopping 14%, which are probably like, Luke, that's nowhere near 100%. That's like three in 20. How the heck is it gonna actually do my job? But if you look at the best model in the market today, it's only at around 2%. So. It's a little bit better. Personally, I think this graph answers on whether you should learn coding or not. It's not solving all the issues today or tomorrow, but we're on a positive trajectory to maybe one day be at 100%, but not anytime soon. Now, the other thing that reassures me from this is that I don't know if you noticed this from those videos that I showed earlier, but for complex tasks, Devin takes a fair bit of prompting. And by fair, I mean a lot. In this case, I feel the engineer had to go into an inordinate amount of detail in order to specify how it wanted it to solve its problem, which with this level of specificity, I think even the free version of ChatGPT could solve it. And that's where I think we are with this technology today. Yeah, although they're claiming that Devin is- First AI software engineer. Auto GPT, which has been around for almost a year now, has been doing a lot of the same things, but doesn't get as nearly as much virality as Devin did, which coincidentally is happening almost in tandem when these type of companies are raising funding, like Cognition did last week. I wanna be clear, I'm not trying to shit on Devin and say it's a bad tool. In fact, I think quite the opposite. I think they've done incredible advancements and we're moving in the right direction. But these type of technologies can be overhyped and it is driven by funding. Now there's another announcement last week that I feel is more relevant to us data nerds. And it deals with this model, which is only second to OpenAI's GPT-4. The team at Anthropic released this video on Claude working as an economic analyst. They prompted it to look up GDP trends for the US and write a markdown table of the estimates, which it got to work transcribing this screenshot of a graph of the GDP. From there, they went to evaluate how accurate those transcriptions were. So it had the model plot those transcribed values in this interactive plot. And then after having provided the model the actual results, it plotted them side by side. So how accurate is Claude at using the vision model for transcription? We tried it with a large sample of made up GDP graphs and its transcription accuracy was within 11% on average. Which, not bad, but probably gonna be improved. So then they moved into having Claude use machine learning in order to predict GDP. In this case, using a Monte Carlo simulation. And just like most people, thinks the US economy is gonna be just fine for the next few years. But really, none of this was impressive until I saw this, where it asked Claude to perform an analysis of the world's economy, looking at more than just one country. In this case, although they didn't disclose it, it looks like they were using some sort of large language model framework in order to implement agents, which all of these agents were working in parallel, collecting all the data they needed for these top countries and processing it. Pretty dang impressive. For the final results, it provided these pie charts comparing the two values. Side note, I was a little disappointed with this because pie charts are actually really bad at comparing values. But nonetheless, it not only provided an analysis, it also provided a final summary detailing how the major countries plan to fare over the next few years. Now I thought this was more impressive because it demonstrated how you can actually use coding such as Python to perform an analysis with a large language model. And frankly, this is where I see analytics going into the future. Personally, I'm gonna be exploring more on this channel how to use things like Python in conjunction with libraries that build out agents for large language models to solve more complex problems. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And if you'd like to learn more about how to start coding in data analytics, I just made this tutorial right here on how to learn SQL. All right, with that, see you in the next one.